All right, our first new product is coming soon, and you want to talk about this. I do. Um, these bees came in and they didn't come out quite right, so I'm going to get them redone. But meanwhile, you can gaze upon and subscribe to the analog devices plus educate temperature and motion wing featuring the ADT7410 and ADXL343. Some nice sensors from uh, analog devices, uh, sold through DigiKey, of course. But uh, we suck them on a wing, and uh, probably good if you're doing any IoT projects or you just want to measure uh, motion and temperature for some sensor ana analysis or data logging. Um, I know people wanted a sensor feather wing. This is our first one that'll just be like a sensor on a feather wing. Uh, sign up, and when the PCBs come in correctly, we will make them. Okay. I like Next that. up. Uh, we got some bolts. Let's skip, skip to the bolts. These are all the things you can do with the bolts. Yeah. <laughs> and then these but, are the bolts. Um, but see how exciting that was? It's actually this. It's actually bolts. So you get uh, six machine screws, I think M3, and then uh, six hex nuts. Why? Um, some people want to attach things to a circuit playground or a Gemma or a micro bit or Flora, and you don't want to solder to them and you don't use alligator clips. You can always use alligator clips, but then eventually you're like, it's kind of bulky. So let's go to the overhead and I can show this off. So normally, you know, you can, you can attach um, by uh, soldering or clipping on, but this is like really bulky. And like, let's say you have a bunch of uh, NeoPixels or something or, or whatever you, you have that has wires um, attached to it and you want to connect it uh, to your circuit playground. Well, you can just put the bolt in through and then uh, you screw it on and then you see there's a little bit of space. You take the wire and you can uh, hook it around like this and then take a uh, Phillips head screwdriver, attach it, and now uh, your NeoPixels are lovely and glowing and they're um, solidly connected but without any soldering. I mean, you have to be a little careful to make sure that the wires don't um, split off and, and touch two pads by accident. But uh, besides that, they're you know quite easy to use and it's a low cost way to attach. Um, here it's a uh, Circuit Playground Express. We'll work with anything that has these large holes in them. So our Flora and our Gemma will work as well, as well as a micro bit. So you can use this for anything. It's just handy, comes in a little packet, ready to go. You get these, so you can do stuff like this. Yeah. Okay, next up, go around like this. Yeah, so we have another addition in the um, flexible neon strips that we've had for a bit, people really like them. This time it's in purple. Um, if you haven't seen these before, it's a 12 volt LED strip just like this, you can see it. It's kind of like rectangular and then it's edge lit with this kind of uh, round, soft um, elastomer silicone uh, covering. You can cut it if you like, although you have to be careful to cut, you know, if you cut it, like it's hard to solder to the cut side. So just, you can make it shorter, but you'd have to dig around inside to solder to the um, connection pads if you want to make um, more than one solder point. And uh, it's, it's got this nice neon like glow. It's bright like neon. It's diffused like neon, but it isn't high voltage and isn't expensive, and of course you can bend it however you like. So I've got some here. I can show on the overhead as well. So yeah, it comes, this is actually where the LED strip is, and it's at its uh, right angle um, LEDs, and you can see little cut points here if you, if you do want to cut them. But it's a nice diffuse color. I mean, here it's so bright you can't see it's purple that well, but it's, it's a nice diffuse uh, color that come in one meter. We have a bunch of different colors. We have some uh, projects as well. You'll need a transistor to use these and you know you can't address them so it's all on or all on off uh, but you can PW on them to make them dimmer. Okay. Now in purple. Next up. From Pimeroni we just got these in so we rushed to get them in the store. This is the Kibo kit. Okay keyboard rainbow I guess is what the Kibo stands for. Um, not the person who would appear on Usenet, if you said their name. And this is a add-on kit for Raspberry Pi. It actually comes with a Pi Zero W, which I didn't realize. So it's actually a pretty good deal because you get the computer in it. And you program it with a special firmware and then it becomes a, a USB controlled uh, keypad. You can, I think, use it just with normal Raspbian, but I think if you use the operating system, it boots up really fast and you can program the keys. So the way it works is um, these are snap fit in keys actually they're they're not soldered in and these are the soft touch so they're they're linear they don't click i mean they you, you definitely know that you you press them and they make a clicking sound but they don't have a clicking feel which i think is kind of nice if people really like this one 
um, we'll maybe get the cookie version. And each one underneath it has a dot star LED, APA 102, um, that shines through it and it kind of diffuses um, through the LED here. It, it, it's, it's quite bright, but um, from an angle, it diffuses nicely. And um, it comes as a multi-layer board, fully assembled, there's no soldering involved. And then you can uh, program each of these keys to do something. The software that Pimeroni's written, you could have it uh, launch code or send, um, uh, you know, send commands to your computer, like hotkey commands that can um, type in text that you don't want to type multiple times or shortcuts or, uh, you know, if you're, if you're doing camera control, it can change cameras or whatever you want to use. It's basically an open source type of a, a stream deck launch deck controller. Um, it's a little kit. It's almost complete. Uh, you do need an SD card. That's the only thing you need. But other than that, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to get going. Um, you put it together. Again, no soldering required, and it has these really cool clear keycaps. Maybe I can remove one carefully. I'm sure people want to see what it's like. So this is underneath. It's, a, it's not a Cherry MX. It's a Cherry MX clone. Um, but I think they did that because um, for this use case, you don't need to have the really expensive key switches. It has the same feeling, um, but for a good price. And like really sweet looking silkscreen relief there with the gold um, exposed mask. So okay. that's the Kibo. And the star of the ship tonight besides you, Lady Adafruit. And the community is? GPA Expander Bonnet. This is an easy bonnet, but um, I think really handy. A lot of people, they have a Raspberry Pi, especially once you start adding hats or add-ons, you run out of pins. And you're like, hey, you know, I want to control a lot of LEDs, a lot of buttons. How do I do that? You know, we easily. So we made this um, bonnet. It has an MCP23017 um, 16 output expander. So you get 16 GPIO. Each one of those can control an LED or read a button. Can't do PWM but it can do digital output, high or low, and it can do digital input, and it can have pull-up resistors as well, which is kind of nice. So for switches, you don't need an extra resistor. It's all controlled over I2C. We have a wonderful library that's really easy to use. There's also uh, two interrupt outputs. If you'd like to use the interrupts, if you have a lot of buttons and you don't want to have to constantly query the chip, you know, which button is pressed, you can use the interrupt. It'll tell you, hey, one of the buttons was pressed, and now you can ask me which one, which is usually much faster than, than uh, constant polling. Another thing I did is, um, because I have a level shifting I2C circuitry on here, the chip is actually using five volt logic. And that means that you can use it to drive uh, blue, white, or green LEDs that usually want higher voltages than 3.3 volts. So you can use it to drive LEDs or buttons. And then the I2C is still 3.3 volt safe for the Raspberry Pi, um, but you can interface with five volt uh, chips and LEDs and devices, which is very handy. If you don't want that, you can cut the trace and put it to 3.3 volt mode. Um, and then I have a quick demo. Um, you don't have to solder in these 2x8 uh, connectors, but if you do, you can use um, IDC cables. So, like, we don't have these in the store quite yet, but this is an IDC cable um, this out of the way, that you can plug in, and now, you know, you have the outputs farther away. Um, there's two ports, one for the uh, first eight pins, the A port, and then one for the other eight pins, the B port. And each one of these has a matching ground pin, which is great because you can just connect up an LED or switch directly, you know, to the ground and then have the digital output be the either the sensor input with the pull up or you can just use it to power the LED. Um, or you don't need to solder these in, you could just have a slim version. And uh, the demo, which is hopefully still running, is um, it has one pin connected uh, with a pull up and then one pin connected as an output. Oh, great. So it works. When I press it, the Python code um, reads that the switch has been pressed, These, the GPIO went low, and lights up the LED. Very simple, but it's um, in a circuit Python compatibility mode. So like, you could actually use this to then control other devices that need GPIO. So for example, use this and you can use it to control like an LCD if you like, or if you have something else that needs uh, GPIO bit banging. So very handy, uh, low cost, easy to use, just pop it right on. Um, to your Raspberry Pi. It works with any Pi with a 2x20 connector. So Pi 0, 3, 2, A plus, B, everything but the very first uh, Raspberry Pis. Alrighty, and with that is... Thanks, everybody.